G'day YouTube, 1MJ here and welcome back. Well, we're all still waiting for <laughs> a decision one way or the other from Bitcoin. As we can see, it's still above $10,000. Uh, it does drop below 10,000 on occasions. I saw it at 9,999, you know, something like that. But it doesn't stay there for long. And if we go over and have a look at the seven days, it's lo it looks like it's flattening out. But We'll just have to wait and see. And I guess what we want to try and find out is what's the sentiment out there? You know, what are other people sort of thinking? Because, you know, you need to take some advice from a few different people. Unless you think you're the, the king and you know it all, then fair enough, sweet. I don't claim to be that. But I do, you know, I, I do like to think I have a bit of an idea of what's going on, but it doesn't mean I always know what's going wrong. And I do like to get a feel for sentiment uh, and what other people are thinking. Well, let's go over here. We've got an interesting article here uh, on Cointelegraph, and it says, remember Bitcoin tanks in September, Kraken report. So let's have a look. In August 2020, volatility, volatility report, US-based cryptocurrency exchange Kraken, has predicted that September will bring excessively negative returns for Bitcoin. The report notes that historically, September is Bitcoin's worst performing month, with an average return of minus 7%. It points out that as Bitcoin has underperformed its average returns for most months of 2020, this month's performance was likely to be even worse than usual. That doesn't sound good already, that's concerning. Despite the bearish outlook for the short term, the report identifies some glimmers of hope, including that a record share of Bitcoin supply has not moved in more than 12 months, with Kraken noting that historically this dynamic has foreshadowed a new bull market. The report adds that Bitcoin is likely to see aggressive fluctuations as the markets move further away from July's local lows or a suppressed pocket for volatility. Twelve times in the past, Bitcoin's annualized volatility bottomed between 15% and 30% before climbing on average to 140% and returning to 196% over 94 days. As of the end of August, 38 days have passed since the volatility, volatility sorry, excuse me, low of 23%, 23% set on July 24, with volatility rising to 44% and uh, price gaining plus 25%. So obviously they're a little bit bearish on the short term, but long term they're pretty optimistic. But interesting, they said September was generally a bad month. Well, I guess we've got to go and have a look. Let's have a look. Let's get out of here. All right, and this is on the daily. Let's go to the monthly and see how Bitcoin generally does on a monthly basis. All right, where are we? This is September. Well, it's not looking good. Let's go September. Not looking good. Well, not, not looking good. It wasn't good. It was on the down. All right, let's go back. September, on the down again, all right. This September, how about that? They might have, they might be onto something there. So even in a bull market, September was not great. All right, so that was September there. Let's go back to next September. Remember, oh, here we go. We had a green September. So not all of them are bad but just uh, in general. So there we go. We can see based on previous history that September has been a pretty bad month for a while. Now, whether it's bad all the time, I don't know. Let's go back to the daily here. All right, so we need to do a couple of things. So this red line can go for number one. This is now invalid. We've dropped out of that and let's remove that. All right, that was holding a support. Now we just have this as resistance. All right, what we can see is that the 50-day moving average has been lost. The 100-day moving average has been lost. It's kind of, you know, somewhat maybe resistance and even somewhat sort of support there, but we're going to call it more resistance at the moment. We can't really break above it and hold above it. We're more below it at the moment. So what we're waiting to see is if this greater trend line uh, is going to be what it bounces off. So again, it'll possibly, you know, this is on the daily, come down, uh, you know, cover that CME gap. And I know we talk about it a lot. And look, CME gaps don't have to be filled. 
It's just that 90 something percent of the time they have. So I guess the chances are it's probably going to be filled, but it's not guaranteed. But as we can see, it is kind of setting uh, lower highs, that's for sure. And even the low got a little bit sort of lower, although we've wicked down below. This day is just sort of starting, and I can tell you it was red before this candle, and now it's green. So we're just going to have to wait and see. But again, is this major trend line going to be the difference, or is it the 200-day moving average? Do we maybe have to come way down to $9,000 and bounce off this? We looked yesterday, and again, the 20-week uh, moving average and the 21-week uh, exp exponential uh, moving average, they've both sort of crossed. Uh, and, and yeah, nothing sort of nothing clear at the moment about exactly what's going to happen. And for the weeklies, obviously, we'd have to wait to the end of the week to see what happens. But on the daily, not a lot of action. Let's have a look. Let's go down into the hourlies and see if there's anything there that's going to give us a clue on what sort of might be happening. Four hourly. Possibly doesn't want to do it. No, there we go. All right, so what can we see on the four hourly? Well, it definitely looks like it's still kind of going down. There's a distinct pattern here of a downward movement. And yes, look, the lows are kind of set, you know, in and around about here, again, that $9,900 level. But we have sort of been getting closer to this. And the more times we kind of bump off it, the probably more likely it is to break. But something else we can do is let's go have a look at the S&P 500. What's the S&P 500 doing? Because we're very closely uh, linked to it, unfortunately. Well, here we go. This is the four hourly and it's going down. So my gut feeling at the moment is we're probably going to go down some. And I think in the next you know, couple of hours, today or two, we're going to cover that CME gap. And then it's just about where it's going to kind of go from there. But, you know, everyone will be kind of say, well, where should you put your money? That's a decision for you to make. You know, if you want to sell and get out and, you know, just put it into dollars and wait and see what the correction is, then by all means do it. I guess it depends on where you bought and what your risk tolerance is and, you know, your time frame as well. For me, I'm in it for the long haul, so I'm not going anywhere. But don't think stocks are automatically the place to go because, again, this is everything dropping. Let's have a look at Tesla. Here's Tesla. So everyone was singing Tesla's praise. You know, it just kept going up and it was never going to stop going up. Well, it's had one hell of a correction right now. So it's down to $327 from up around $500. So had a drop and possibly still going. And we just have to wait and see exactly where the bottom of that correction is. But at the moment, my gut feeling is we're probably going to go a little bit lower. I don't know if there's going to be any big, massive you know, disaster drops from here on in for Bitcoin. So we'll get back over to here. But I'd say we're possibly going to go down and most likely test this uh, trend line. And we'll get off the four hour. I generally don't use the hourlies, but sometimes they might give you a bit of a clue of what might be happening. Better for day traders and things like that. I'm not a day trader, I'm an investor. So I think chances are we're going to come down and bounce off this. That's just my gut feeling at the moment. They just seem to be kind of slowly but surely creeping its way down. Nothing too drastic, but I think this is probably where we're going to come to and hopefully bounce off this. But if not, then really we're all praying that we don't get below the 200-day moving average because Bitcoin has never you know, gone below 200-day moving average when there's been a bull market. So if we go below that, then it breaks the whole bull market thing. But we'll just have to wait and see. Now we go over here, there's another interesting story. Bitcoin dropped below 10,000. Three reasons Bitcoin uh, and crypto market will crash again. Well, whether it's going to crash again or not, we'll have to wait and see. But again, the Septembers uh, of past have looked pretty bad. So yeah, maybe we will go down and test that 200 day moving average. But at the moment, that's only in the $9,000 mark. And hopefully it does it slowly and doesn't do it too fast. But what do we got here? Uh, they're talking about the five-day moving average and the 10-day moving average uh, acting as uh, now strong resistance levels for Bitcoin. So again, I don't use those shorter time frames. I'm, I'm looking at more of the macro picture than the micro picture. But there we go. Someone else thinks it's going to dip. But 
Again, it's not all bad news. Let's go over here and have a look. With this dip, what have people been doing? Whale Watch. 68 new whales joined Ethereum network and BTC holds lowest concentration of whales. So there's less BTC whales now than there ever has been before, uh, basically is what this article goes into. And look, in all fairness, there is a reason for that because Bitcoin and ETH have generally had their really big massive pumps. It's not to say they won't pump anymore, but the, you know, the huge gains, they were done earlier. You know, again, for Bitcoin back in 2012, 2013, you know, that's when the massive gains were made. And Ethereum was back in sort of 2017, you know, when you're picking it up for a couple of dollars and then it went to, you know, $1,400. Don't get me wrong, I'm not saying there's not going to be big returns for them uh, in this bull run. I absolutely think there will be. But the whales, they understand the markets. And it's not that they don't have any Bitcoin and it's not that they don't have any Ethereum. But they're already looking for these other altcoins, the new ones that are going to pump, you know, a thousand X and all the rest of it. They've, you know, slowly but surely uh, sold off their Bitcoin. And don't get me wrong, not all of it. And they'll buy back into it at the appropriate times. They understand the markets a lot better than anyone. And they have the, the funds to manipulate the markets. Not that I think all of this is uh, whale manipulation, but... They've been around for a while and they understand and so they're, you know, they're selling off their Bitcoin at the moment and also hoping the, the market goes a little bit lower and they just buy in lower again and then increase their levels of Bitcoin. You know, the strong hands eventually will succeed and there'll be less and less whales. They will slowly sort of get bought out uh, as more and more people get into it. It's just uh, they will sell out generally for a lot more than what they got in. So well done to them. So again, we go back to here. It's not looking great, but there is gains to be made. It's not all bad news. Here we go. Very minor gains in the last 24 hours. 5% Binance coin. They've been doing reasonably well. Not too bad. A lot of things happening over at Binance at the moment. Ontology, Celsius Network. Well, everyone wants to lend out their stuff and make some money, so that's not uh, unusual. Uh, Engine coin. Glad Engine coin. I mean, I'm still in the red. We can see over here. Not a lot has really pumped. It's just more leveling out and making back some of those grounds. Well, not too much going on other than, you know, we're all waiting for Bitcoin to decide what it's going to do because uh, Bitcoin leads the market in general. Good thing is we're holding around that kind of $330 billion mark, but I wouldn't be surprised if we got back down below $300 billion. Uh, and again, probably, you know, test that $9,600 sort of level. The CME gap gets covered. And then, you know, maybe it's going to be, you know, the bad September that they spoke about. And we're going to correct all the way down to that 200-day moving average. And again, the 200-day moving average, that is almost 9,000 flat. So again, if we go below that, then that'll be the first time that uh, Bitcoin has gone below the 200-day moving average uh, in what people consider to be a bull run. And so I think that would actually negate whether we're in a bull run. It's not that it couldn't quickly turn around after but it just wouldn't be history repeating itself. Well, that's it from me. We'll be waiting. Well, at least I'll be waiting. Hopefully you're waiting from me. Let me know what your thoughts are. Do you think we're going to come and bounce off this uh, greater trend line? Do you think we're going to dip down uh, and bounce off the 200-day moving average? Do you even think we're in a bull market? I'd love to know your thoughts. I believe we're in a bull market. The fact we broke out of this is you know, my, my indicator. And uh, it's already been a prolonged uh, bull market. But with the way things are in the world at the moment, you know, it could turn things around. And, you know, we'll have to wait and see what happens, unfortunately, with the S&P 500, the NASDAQ. If they continue to sell off, unfortunately, Bitcoin, uh, it's highly correlated at the moment. Uh, and hopefully at some stage that changes. But, you know, it's getting more mass adopted. So unfortunately, it's probably going to be in line with it more than anything. Well, stay safe, be kind to one another. Hopefully you weren't, you know, getting completely and utterly wrecked and you had a couple of gains in there. And I'll see you next time.